What's going on YouTube? This is SG1 Sports and you're watching our Big Ten football channel. Talking Huskers here with the Big Ten, just two weeks away from hitting the field at Ohio State. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football with Chris Wall from Husker Hype on the line. Scott Frost had a news conference today. We'll get the latest uh, here from Chris. How you doing today, Chris? Hey, Mark. Doing well. Thanks for having me back. Absolutely. Absolutely. Nebraska football uh, hitting the field with uh, what we would think would be Adrian Martinez as, as the starting quarterback. That's pretty much assumed across the nation, especially since he had so much Heisman talk and hype going into last season. Um, but there's actually, in, in your interactions with the players and what was stated uh, at the news conference today, actually some buzz that uh, there's still a competition of sorts. Yeah, definitely. So Frost kind of came out today and, you know, said there's still a competition going on. It's healthy as of right now. It would be Martinez, obviously, but they're definitely encouraging competition. A couple of the other players, um, specifically the tight end, basically just came out and said, uh, Austin Allen said, you know, there's definitely a clear competition between Martinez and McCaffrey uh, going on right now. So I, I think Martinez would be the guy, but definitely McCaffrey's a dude. He wants to get in there and he wants to play. So whether it's right away or later down the road. I, I think they'll both find a way in there somehow. That uh, situation revolving around uh, Omar Manning, one of the more uh, anticipated players on the offense that people really want to see. Uh, did Scott Frost give any clarification as to his situation going into the opener? Yeah, so big question mark around Omar Manning, the big Juco uh, kid that's come in. Uh, you know, we've kind of, we kind of, been lacking that size at wide receiver, that go up and get it guy. Uh, you know, we we lost J.D. Spielman too, our number one returner, and went to TCU. So we really kind of need that that guy. And uh, the thing with Omar is basically what we're, what we're hearing and what Frost kind of reiterated is he's kind of nicked up. He's got some personal things going on right now. Uh, there's a lot of rumors flying around it. Uh, he did say he's hopeful for him to uh, be back in practice and to play for game one. Uh, personally. I, I don't think there's any way that he's playing uh, at Ohio State right now. Uh, so best case scenario, uh, he kind of heals up, gets gets everything sorted out, and hopefully can can join us at some point this season because he's an absolute game changer. It's an offense that going into last season, there was a lot of uh, anticipation for explosive plays, uh, of course, yeah. led by Adrian Martinez, who ended up only throwing, I think, like six touchdowns last year. 10 TDs, nine picks last year for Adrian Martinez. So it didn't turn in the 30 or 40 touchdown season that people anticipated uh, both running and, and uh, throwing. Uh, and then a lot of just big names. You mentioned J.D. Spielman, of course, uh, the leading receiver uh, on the team and one of the top receivers in the history of the program moving on. And um, with Wandale Robinson coming in, a lot of hype around him. There was just uh, an anticipation to see the Scott Frost offense really hit the scene and hit the ground running uh, last year. It didn't happen. Uh, your thoughts about the the offense and whether um, you, you think they have the personnel to make it uh, explode this year? Yeah, yeah. I think every year it's been man, we're we're excited. We got this guy, this guy, this guy, and uh, the weapons. And it's just it's just can they put it together and can they complete throws and can they move the ball? And, you know, they have the weapons. It's just going to be, if they can do it, I think a big part of it though is going to be Martinez and the offensive line. Uh, the offensive line last year was relatively inexperienced. I mean, we had Cam Jurgens, a true freshman starting at center who had never played center before. He was a tight end in high school. So we got Cam, he's bigger, he's stronger, he's smarter. Hopefully he gets his snaps down. Uh, just that that offensive line from left to right, experience, there's depth there on the offensive line. And then Adrian Martinez, who assumably is going to be the starting cornerback, quarterback. And um, he played injured a lot last year. And, you know, Frost doesn't like to say it, and I don't think Martinez likes to admit it, but he, he was injured a good part of the year last year. So as long as they can get some weapons around him, and um, I think they'll be able to move the ball a lot better this year. Chris Wall on the line with us uh, to talk Nebraska. Uh, they have a date against the Buckeyes of Ohio State uh, in less than two weeks. You can catch Chris and the rest of the crew there at Husker Hype. All right, uh, Wandale Robinson uh, actually turned into more of a running back in sorts in terms of uh, at least uh, getting the carries from the backfield, uh, 340 yards, three touchdowns, 40 receptions uh, as a wide receiver. Dedrick Mills, obviously, with 10 touchdowns and coming in from Georgia Tech. 
being the main ball carrier uh, and and you know pretty much did what uh, was expected there uh, based on his past at Georgia Tech. So uh, any competition for Diedrich Mills? How do you expect the distribution of the running game to turn out? Yeah, so I'm glad you brought those two guys, those two names, uh, Wandale and Diedrich Mills. And those guys are solid. They're going to they're gonna make plays and they're going to move the ball. And as long as they stay, stay healthy, I think that they're a large reason the offense can be successful. Um, the, what, the, the scary thing is, is behind Wandale and uh, behind Diedrich Mills, there's really not much experience at all. There's the talent on paper, um, but there's just not the production. Uh, behind Mills, you have... Uh, in the backup spot, Ramir Johnson, uh, speedy, shifty. And then you got uh, Ronald Tompkins has had a lot of injuries. Uh, the coaches like him. It's just whether or not he'll be able to produce. And then a couple of younger guys, uh, Sevion Morrison out of Oklahoma, um, true freshman, put on some nice weight. So he might be able to add some depth there to that position as well. Uh, wide receiver, you got Wandale. I love that he's not going to be running the ball between the tackles this year. Thank goodness. Get him out get him in space. And then behind, behind Wandale, uh, Alante Brown, the number one prep kid coming in, uh, is a big, uh, target to get some, some passes this year. Please like comment, share the videos on social media and subscribe right here. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, talking to, uh, Chris wall from Husker hype on uh, Nebraska with the Buckeyes awaiting in two weeks, Muhammad Barry, tremendous player, leader of the defense. He's gone. How do you feel about this side of the ball? Uh, the defense, uh, I really like the secondary. They're they're deep, they're fast, uh, senior led, um, good good group in the defensive uh, secondary. Travis Travis Fisher, the coach back there, has got him. He's got him rolling, so I like him back there. Um, the linebackers is probably the the, the bigger question mark. Uh, you got a couple of the older guys with uh, Will Honus, Colin Miller that are smart, good leaders. Uh, and then you got some younger guys, the uh, Nick Henrik and um, Blaze Gunnerson coming in, a couple of JUCO guys. So it's just kind of who, who's going to be able to make plays there, specifically uh, in the pass rush. It's just the pass rush is the one thing that I've just harped on for the past four or five years. So it's just it's just been so lacking. So who can create some pass rush? I really like JoJo Delman uh, and uh, the kid coming in, Nico Cooper, uh, there at linebacker. Get uh, Chris Wall on the line. You can catch him and the rest of the staff there at Husker Hype, breaking down Nebraska football on a regular basis. Uh, Nebraska, Ohio State, that's the headliner there in the Big Ten in week one, a date against Wisconsin. You're going to know quite a bit about your football team after two weeks. Um, yeah. Trying to figure out, uh, obviously, Ohio State, Penn State. So that's, that's a rough go right there, considering that uh, once the Big Ten uh, broke down the schedule to just the eight games, and then the additional game that's going to be determined based on the seedings at the end of the year that you're usually have three crossover games. So everybody uh, just explaining this uh, plays everybody in the division and then plays in the big 10, three crossover games. So that's been teared down to two and you get the two difficult ones. You get Ohio state and Penn state. So no favors for Scott Frost and company. So it's a, it's a pretty difficult slate. Yeah. I mean, it is what it is. And you know, we got football, so Husker fans are just wanting to see our guys out there. But, yeah, you got Ohio State and you got Penn State. The only team from the West that's playing both of those teams is Nebraska. And then you throw Wisconsin in there, you know, and Nebraska hasn't beat Wisconsin in, I think, six years. So, I mean, that, that that's the one that after Ohio State, they got to come home. And uh, that's the one I got circled on the schedule that they got to win this year is Wisconsin. So what's realistic for this team in nine games and uh, Scott Frost, obviously with two disappointing seasons with uh, four and five wins and you know, what's, what's the vibe around the, the, uh, the football team in regards to the fan base and the, the, the support surrounding Scott Frost and, and the expectations for this year. Uh, you know, everyone's still supporting Scott Frost. I think he's the guy uh, he got, plenty of time left there as far as expectations for the year it's it's kind of just wide range I, I feel like a lot of Husker fans won't be happy unless we win six and some of us will be happy if, if we win four me personally I, I think if Nebraska could find a way to win four games uh, it's going to be leave a little bit to be left to be desired but I think if they can win four games and if 
one of those can be either Wisconsin, Iowa, or Minnesota. Um, then, then you, then you go forward from there. Maybe you sneak into a bowl game this year. Uh, so four, five would be great. I think there's three games specifically. If you think Minnesota, uh, Iowa and Wisconsin, if you, you need to win one of those. And if you can win two of those, uh, then beat the other beat Northwestern beat Illinois. There, there's your four or five games right there. And I think that'd be a success. All right, Chris, we appreciate you stopping by. I uh, hope you en- enjoy the season here. Nebraska football, very intriguing. Certainly gets us a lot of views because despite uh, the downtimes <laughs> recently, a ton of interest out there uh, on Scott Frost and what he's going to do there at Nebraska. And like you, I'm still a believer that he's the right fit for the job. I, I just think based on what he showed uh, as an offensive coordinator at Oregon, taking that to UCF, turning that situation around quickly, coming back to Nebraska, that it took him some time to look around, weed out the the, the players that weren't necessarily bought in and going to deliver for him. And so I think it's a, it's a bit of a tough turnaround, but uh, I think he's the guy. Yeah, I think so. I, I think it's taken him a little bit longer than he initially thought it was going to be. I mean, it's the Big Ten. There's some big boys in there, and uh, – they're smacking it around, but I, I do think that he's the right the right guy for the spot. New offensive coordinator, Matt Lubick, who he coached with at Oregon coming in this year. Uh, I really am excited for him, and hopefully he can give the offense a little bit more of a spark 